Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome to my video blog series, Transforming Pain and Bondage to Freedom. Today we are on part four of seven, where we look into the heart chakra. So, hopefully you're familiar with the model. If you are somehow finding this video without seeing part one, highly recommend you go to part one so you can understand all the things that I won't take the time to go through here today but uh, you probably want to understand so you really understand what it is that I'm sharing with you. Hopefully you've been doing your homework so that just this isn't just a bunch of talk, talk, talk because talk is cheap unless you turn it into action. And I'm a man of action. So let's get into it today. Today we're going to talk about the heart chakra. It's the fourth chakra. It's centered in your chest. Your physical heart is slightly to the left, but the heart chakra, I feel fairly central. Um, the heart chakra and the theme of the heart chakra is giving and receiving love. The uh, age that we are learning the lessons around giving and receiving love is 21 to 27. Remember, we the dominant psychological theme of each chakra is a seven-year cycle. So the first seven years of your life, you're learning about safety and security. Second, about your second seven years about your sex identity, sexuality, and how to create life force energy, which is what we largely learn from our parents and our society through diet, lifestyle, and belief systems. Third chakra is 14 to 21 and that's personal power and self-will we covered that in our last segment so what you'll find is a lot of people really by the time they're 21 they are usually out having intimate relationships they may even have gotten married they may even have kids my, my first son was born when i just turned 18 so when we come into that 21 to 27 uh, age group, 21, maybe 21 to 28, I should change that, seven years. So we'll just make a little eight out of that. Um, then we are often facing challenges with giving and receiving love. By now, we probably have a job. We are probably having a hard time finding time for ourselves. We might be going to schools of some kind. No, it's not that we're not getting exposed to challenges about giving and receiving love at the lower level. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the chakras. I'll get to that in a minute. It's just that we reach the level where we begun, begin to be consciously aware of the challenges of love. So when you're a kid, you're kind of just surviving your environment. Um, when you're a teenager, you're just all about me, whatever I want to do, go, go, go. But once you start getting to the level of becoming an adult, then you have to go from I orientation. So the first, second, and third chakras are really all about me. Am I safe? What do I want or need sexually? What do I want to create? Uh, be it playfulness or how do I express my life force energy? And then the third chakra is who am I and what do I want to do in the world and how do I go about doing it? Once we get to the fourth chakra, our orientation switches to we and that's typically then we start looking for, you know, partners that are going to be with us for a while, boyfriend, girlfriend, which can, be, can become uh, husband, wife. So the orientation in the psyche switches, and we are now learning the real lessons of we, and by this time we should be an adult, so there's no mommy or daddy figures to bail us out or mediate our, um, <laughs> our unconscious behavior. So... When it comes to what areas of the body respond to stress in the heart chakra system, we see it's the heart itself, the thymus, which is an immune gland right behind the sternum, the lungs, some aspects of the arms, particularly the armpit and along the 
inner aspect of the arm, but the whole arm can get involved. Um, the chest region, the upper back region. So we all know about heart attacks. We have uh, symptoms of a heart attack or pain in the left side of the chest, tightness, shortness of breath, and often pain or symptoms of tingling or numbness down the left arm because the heart is slightly displaced to the left. So you get these symptoms typically on the left because of the uh, viscerosomatic reflexes, which means how the uh, heart as an organ communicates through the musculoskeletal system lots of discussions we could have on how that works but that's a what we get into in check hlc holistic lifestyle coach level three so the issue is giving and receiving love so whenever we're challenged to give our love effectively or to receive love effectively it will have an effect on how the energy flows through the heart chakra <clears throat> So to really understand what I mean, because love is such an elusive word like God, it means something different to everyone, I will share a definition that I created for what love is to help my students understand. And I spent a lot of time working with my soul and meditating to get to this place of feeling comfortable with my definition. So I define love as the flow of energy and information through empathic and compassionate connection to self and or other. And other relates to people, places, or things. And that can also be animals. So any other living being uh, would be included in that. So other can be anything other than yourself. So we can love our car. We can love our dog. We can love our house. We can love... Um, certain parks or certain places that we vacation. Um, and we can love things that we're addicted to as well. So when we look at that, love is the flow of energy. Whenever there's a feeling of love, there's definitely energy there. Think of when you kiss your lover, how much energy can flow through those tongues and it light you up, right? And wherever we have energy, we usually have some form of information. If we put our hand above a flame, it's hot and we pull our hand back and if someone says, what happened? You say, it's hot. So we describe the energy with information. Information is really based on the concept of recognizable patterns. So when you see the word L-O-V-E, those are four symbols organized in such a way that the pattern has meaning and it's pointing to how energy is perceived. Okay, so the flow of energy and information through empathic, which means to feel, and compassionate, which means to understand, connection to self or other. So one of the key things I want to point out in this definition is that we may not be having love challenges with other people that could be causing symptoms for us and problems. And we use this 21 to 28 bracket <clears throat> to look into our life. As a therapist, when I'm looking at, say if someone comes to me with cancer, if I find that they went through a divorce and they were age 21 to 28, well, that points to issues of love. Now, even if I didn't know what their uh, relationship was like, say they came to me with some kind of problem in this region or immune system or um, uh, autoimmune trouble, um, any, anything that, that uh, suggests that it's related to these regions of the body, I might start asking questions. What was going on in your life between age 21 and 28? Because oftentimes we go through these challenges around the psychological themes of the chakras. And when we are growing up, we are learning the lessons of each of the psychological themes. How do we create safety and security in the world? How do we use our life force energy and our sex energy and sexual sexuality? How do we use our personal power and self-will? How do we give and receive love 
How do we cre communicate and create? We do our creation with our hands, which we'll get into in the next section. But then we go downward. So then our next cycle in seven year blocks reverses. Then we learn to communicate as a, we learn to express ourselves as a teacher or a leader. Then we learn to teach others how to love. Then we learn to teach others safety and security. So the first phase of the cycle is our own awakening and awareness. And the second phase of the cycle is where we're tasked with the responsibility as a parent, um, an elder or a teacher. And we learn many of these lessons at a deeper level, but the orientation is towards mastery so you can share them with others. So when I'm saying love is the flow of energy and information through empathic and or compassionate connection to self or other, I'm saying that we first have to start investigating our relationship with ourself. Do we love ourself? Do we give ourself love? And do we receive love from others or receive love from ourselves, such as do you constantly have a negative viewpoint of how good you did? Or even if you get 98% on a test, you walk away, damn it, I should have got that other 2% and beat yourself up, which would be an example of not loving yourself, even though by all standards, that's an A plus, you should love yourself. <clears throat> so when you're looking at love you're not only looking at your relationship to loving yourself which is very very important because you can't love somebody else better than you can love yourself you can only fake it which always <laughs> leads to trouble because that show doesn't last too long um, <clears throat> we want to look at how we love others and how we let them love us but when you want to investigate your relationship with love a simple way to do it Excuse me, I'm a little dry here. <clears throat> Great water. A simple way to do it is look at the issue of love through the eyes of the seven themes of the chakra system. You'll notice down here, hopefully my bottle's not in the way, I've circled the bottom three chakras in uh, red because those are the key areas where we learn about safety and security, how to manage ourselves, how to fit into our family, uh, society, culture, and how to figure out who we are and what we're going to offer the world. Then you see the fourth chakra is in between the first, second, third, and the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Here we have our animal nature, our reptilian nature, our mammalian, our, our, our uh, paleo-mammalian and, and, and neo-mammalian nature, which correlates to the basic triune brain structure, reptilian, mammalian, and neocortical. The heart can be more associated with the frontal lobes, decision-making, learning to think outside of the box and things like that. And then you have the fifth, sixth, and seventh, which I often refer to as the angelic chakras. So here we talk about the animal, here we talk about the angelic, because this is where we're creating beyond the laws of physics. What we're usually speaking our mind, we're, we're speaking our thoughts. The sixth and the seventh relates to the mind and other things I'll get into later. But interestingly, this here above is really what's sometimes referred to as a zero dimensional reality because our thoughts are not really anywhere tangible. You can't say that your idea of about of heaven or hell has an address except for between your left and right ear, but even then no one can find heaven or hell on any kind of a brain scan. So thoughts do not need physical locations. So people like uh, Randy Weitenheimer, um, Wolfgang Pauli, um, many others in their own way, many shaman talk about this as a zero dimensional reality or Carl Jung would call it the imaginal realm, not imaginary, imaginal. And the heart ties these two realms together. So it's through our heart that our thoughts, our ideas, our beliefs, and our interpretations of our instincts and feelings are brought into our physical body and literally circulated through our body. And it is 
where we also determine whether or not we're loving ourselves adequately to care for our body, which would be the animal self that we use to have a human experience. You can say this up here relates to the spiritual realm as energy and information, something that you can't necessarily weigh or measure, but we know is there. And this relates to the physical plane. So if you look at it from a binary perspective, everything up here is a zero, everything down here is some kind of one, and we're mixing these zeros and ones, and we can create anything out of zeros and ones as digital technology has demonstrated to us. So the key point I'm making is the heart is the key integrative chakra that takes all the information from our body and our physical sense of self and merges it with all our thoughts, ideas, beliefs, judgments, etc. from the imaginal realm and integrates it so that we actually have a palpable sense when we feel the feelings of um, not liking somebody or the feelings of um, imagining ourselves uh, giving a fantastic presentation at a meeting, for example. When we're imagining something, that's the zero dimension, and the thoughts and feelings that we have while we're in that state are fused into our heart and therefore into our body and right into our blood and into every cell in our body. Every molecule of water carries this information. Water is an amazing conductor of energy and information. So when it comes to investigating where your issues of the heart chakra that could be causing problems in these areas, the heart, the thymus, the lungs, the arms, the chest, the upper back, are coming from, we can look at the chakras and say, how am I doing with creating safety and security for myself with my love? For example, if you have a job and you need to make money, but you keep getting into fights with your boss and it's threatening your safety and security, well, maybe there's an issue of learning how to b have more empathy and compassion for yourself or your boss there. So you see the fourth is manifesting itself in the first. How am I doing with loving my body enough to have a good four doctor daily practice, eat well, sleep well, move well, and have a dream? and using that to cultivate life force energy so I have the energy to run my body and to be creative and feel good about it. And how am I with loving myself? Am I loving myself enough to take responsibility for my sexual needs or am I codependent upon my partner to make me happy sexually? Which creates huge problems in relationships. Do I have ideas in my head about God uh, God's belief in masturbation or self-pleasure uh, that are stopping me from loving myself so I don't burn in hell. Well, that can certainly stress your heart, and it has been a big stressor for countless numbers of my patients, and so you have to really evaluate, well, even the Bible says God is love, so there you see ideas penetrating the heart that affect the body, and at the end of the day, love is love. If you are taking responsibility for nurturing yourself sexually and meeting those needs, then you share sexual intimacy with somebody, intimacy with someone because you have a genuine interest in sharing and they have a genuine interest in sharing with you, but you're not like a little child that's needy and you gotta make love to me, I gotta have sex, or I'm gonna go crazy, or start behaving irrationally and acting like a child with adult sex organs. Am I loving myself adequately to invest my heart and soul into the effective use of my personal power and self-will? Am I reliable? Do I mean what I say and say what I mean? Those are love issues at the third chakra. Am I growing myself? Am I pursuing expansion of my mind? Am I nourishing my emotions? Am I listening to my instincts? All of which would be loving yourself. 
then giving and receiving love. Am I loving myself enough to communicate honestly and openly about my wants, feelings, and needs? Or am I uh, blaming and shaming and gaming other people, which will create problems? So you could end up with problems in any one of the regions that I'm describing as I go through because you're not loving yourself or others effectively. Am I loving myself enough to spend time in reflection about how I'm doing in my relationships or how I'm managing myself? Am I loving myself enough to trust my insight, looking into things, or am I just believing everything I read or needing some expert to tell me what to eat, how to exercise, and therefore giving my personal power away to external authority, which would be um, something that a lot of people that are conditioned to believe God, some old man in the sky that's watching you and keeping score does, or over-trusting in authority figures such as medical doctors, government officials, and people like that would do. And then seven, do how do I feel about the issue of dying? How do I feel about letting go? Have I loved myself enough to really, truly live while I was here? Now, we'll get into some of these other issues as we move forward, but the seventh chakra is also the home of intuition. And if I'm not loving myself effectively, the side effect is that you don't trust yourself. And if you don't trust yourself, you will very be very unlikely to trust your intuition. And your intuition is something that you want to learn to use and trust. And we will get more into that when we get to that chakra. So there's just a simple way to say, where do I look to see if I'm really loving myself and others better? Where do I look to see if I have empathy and compassion for myself and empathy and compassion for others in my life, particularly those that are challenging, okay? There's an old saying, um, you don't need to like other people, but it is important to love them. So the more spiritually evolved you get, the more you come to the realization that we're all expressions of the universe or of the divine. So there's really only one consciousness here. Therefore, this is why people like Jesus say, love thy enemy as thyself. <laughs> Not too many people that read the Bible have figured that out though especially our president. So, uh, not to make this political, but uh, now, so we look at our pyramid triangle. What is my dream? What do I want to give to the world and share with the world? And then we say, what if I don't have enough? If I don't have enough attention on creating safety and security my, for myself, what happens? If I'm overly focused on creating safety and security for myself, what happens to the way I use the energy and information or flow energy and information to myself and others? Well, if you're always chasing money, you'll burn yourself out. But if you're not paying attention, you'd be like someone who lived a thousand years ago and was too lazy to hunt. Well, you'd starve to death. Am I under appreciating myself sexually or am I over appreciating uh, or over utilizing my sex energy such as a pornography addiction so again what we're looking for is where are the polarities you can do it another way dr happy dr diet dr 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 quiet and dr movement so dr happy am i putting enough love into my dream and in, in a balanced way yes Am I deficient in creating my dream or getting clear on what's happy making for me? And what's the side effect of that? So if I don't put enough love into getting clear on what's happy making for me, what happens? Write it down. If I only focus on what is happy making for me and I do only that and I won't engage anything that's challenging, am I living in a fantasy land or am I living in reality? So if you overly orient yourself only to doing the things that make you happy, but you're not willing to sacrifice to support others or to learn and to grow, well, then you have an imbalance. Am I 
loving myself enough to rest effectively? Well, if I'm not getting enough rest, what happens? If I'm getting too much rest, well, one of the things that happens is you don't, have, you don't put enough energy or time into creating anything or doing anything. Movement. Am I loving myself enough to move my body effectively? Is Zen the most efficient way? Or am I making excuses about <laughs> why I don't have time to exercise and I'll do it next week? Or am I over-exercising and burning myself out? So if you just go through rest, movement, diet, we happiness we talked about. Do I love myself enough to listen to my body? Or am I starving myself and doing fad diets and silly things like that? Or am I so overly focused on diet that I'm losing myself in it and I'm not even having the joy of eating and smelling my food. In other words, there's no mindfulness to it. Now you can use this pyramid system in a lot of ways, but the key point is remember, no matter what you look at with regard to any of the themes of the chakras or giving, receiving love, you're trying to find the middle path. So my relationship with my girlfriend, let's say, am I overly fixated on her and expecting her to make me happy and give me sexual pleasure when I want it, like my little slave? Or am I under-oriented towards my girlfriend and sharing the things with her that would express my love and what happens? Or am I balanced and honest about my wants, feelings, and needs and, and willing to listen to hers or maybe it's his the other way around, wants, feelings, and needs? Go through the process, identify the polarities, find the middle, and then make a promise to yourself. Write a note on your hand. Today, I choose to live and love this way. Whatever you need to do. Paint it on your glasses, put it on your rearview mirror, put it on your refrigerator, but go practice it. And that's how you bring the unconscious up into the conscious and you begin to um, become more conscious. Otherwise, you just keep finding people leaving you in personal relationships or professional relationships, getting fired, and you're just blaming other people. Oh, it's always somebody else's fault. But most people um, get tired of hearing the old uh, tweedledee, tweedledum, poor me, someone else did it. And you find yourself having a harder and harder time finding people to want to be around you and unfortunately, what happens to people like that is they attract people like them into relationships, which just keep starting fires until you finally realize you can't start a fire with one stick. You rub two sticks together, you make enough friction, you'll start a fire. The Indians taught us that. If you only have one stick, you can't do it. So whenever there's a relationship, there's two sticks, and we're each responsible for our 50% of the relationship and whenever there's relationship challenges whether it be self or other i.e relationship challenges with yourself or somebody else personally professionally or professionally remember the rule when there's relationship problems the first thing you can do is work on yourself the second thing you can do is work on the relationship the third thing you can do is do nothing and yesterday equals tomorrow groundhog day the fourth thing you can do is get out of the relationship. The only way you can really get out of the relationship with yourself is to commit suicide. And we could do a whole comprehensive discussion on what that actually means uh, as far as what happens next, but that's not the topic today. So there you go. There's your little chakra lesson. Remember, when it comes to giving and receiving love, what is your unmet task, such as who do you need to forgive? so that you can free yourself of the bondage of that energy. Not forgiving someone and holding grudges or hating other people is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. I've never seen that work. Um, where did your parents have a hard time loving? Because as their child, it is your unmet task to live the life they have not yet lived or you won't evolve. Where's your story gap? What's the story you tell yourself and how is it different than the story you tell other people with regard to giving and receiving love? And what is your secret story? 
secret stories around the heart chakra or are things like nobody loves me or nobody loves me unless I have a certain amount of money or drive a certain car or dress a certain way. So secret stories are really the stories that we tell ourselves. Often we're unconscious that we're doing it until we end up in therapy <laughs> and then we find out or we often can find our secret story by just listening to our inner dialogue in response to other people, such as, oh, that bastard, why does he do that? Leaves the house all shitty or whatever and then get all wound up and then when that person walks in the kitchen and says, hi, honey, how are you doing today? And she says, oh, I'm just fine and just lies right through a smile. So there's an inner story. Or here's a story gap for you. You meet somebody on the street or in the elevator and you say, hey, John, how you doing today? And John says, oh, I'm doing fantastic, thank you. And even though they're saying they're doing well, you know damn well that on the inside they're not doing well. But some of us think, oh, great, because I don't really feel like talking about so-and-so's problems all day. But whenever we sense a story gap, we know that the truth isn't coming to us in the words and that pretty much always points back to a problem with giving and receiving love to self or others. Now, one of my favorite authors and teachers is Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N. His book, Everything is Here to Help You, is very good. And his book, Whatever Arises, Love That, I highly recommend. You can find a nice interview with him and Lisa Gar on Gaia TV. And there are zone exercises specifically to help you balance the fourth chakra energies. And there's a lot of information to help you learn to love your body much better here, how to move it, how to breathe better, how to feed yourself optimally. So if you really want to love yourself and you don't have my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, highly recommend it. The second edition has the essential information on how to use the four doctors in it. Hope you've enjoyed our session today on giving and receiving love. Next time we will get into the fifth chakra, which is all about communication and creation, being creative. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Paul Check. Go to checkinstitute.com, C-H-E-K institute.com. Check out Holistic Lifestyle Coaching uh, Level 1 online. And join me on my podcast, Living 4D with Paul Check, for a lot of absolutely awesome interviews with amazing people. And you can hear my gorgeous, sexy wife, Penny's voice on there. Man, she's the coolest. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.